tēnā koutou katoa, anō. Um, so yes, Sarah Hannan and I will give you an overview of Southland aquaculture today. I'll start with full disclosure, both Sarah and I, we are not aquaculture specialists linked to any part of the industry supply chain at all, um, but I describe us both as um, regional development advocates, um, and someone used some terminology this morning that I think fits us quite nicely too. We're very capable at smashing heads together um, and producing successful outcomes in the region. Um, so uh, I've been told, can we go really quick so we can make up some time? And yes, we can. Um, so we've been through this this morning, um, highlighting the Southland economy. <coughs> so we're primarily an agricultural region uh, with solid manufacturing industry, which is underpinned by dairy and meat processing. Um, our region has a strong traded economy that is predominantly commodity-based. And as we're all aware, um, there are a range of strong economic and environmental pressures bearing down on business. Um, I'm going to flip this on its head a little bit. Um, Chris and Enzis, thank you for the ongoing uncertainty. This has really uh, provided a catalyst for the region, I believe, to, um, you know, to plan and prepare for any disruption to our regional economy. Um, we need and-and solutions, so I think the region are working really nicely at the moment um, on those solutions. Um, and finally, uh, aquaculture. Um, this has been presented as um, a very significant and the single greatest opportunity for Southland economic growth um, currently. So why aquaculture in Southland? Um, as I've just mentioned, it's been identified as the single greatest opportunity to build greater economic resilience. Um, the current aquaculture industry is well established. So over half a century we've been operating um, mussel and salmon farming in the region. Uh, iwi are significant participants, so we've got Ngaitohu Seafood who have submitted um, a consent application for open ocean aquaculture northwest of Rakiuda. Um, our lovely climate has come into play and the cool water conditions in Southland are ideal for producing quality premium protein product in a sustainable way for the world. Um, so as a region, we're also committed to diversification, which Sarah will touch on later. And people are at the heart of this opportunity, and as a region, we're in a prime position to leverage our strengths as a province and people um, and harness our competitive advantages. So what this means is uh, we're, we're in a great position to create training and good high paying jobs, reducing emissions, building community resilience and uh, diversifying away from land um, and diversifying land energy and water use. Oh, that's you, Sarah. So just to give a bit of Southland context and the journey that we've been on over the last eight or nine years, and actually going back further than that, obviously the industry has been well established and operating for over 50 years, and Sanford has been a key player in that uh, over those last 50 years, primarily in Big Glory Bay in Rakiora. So if we look at... Um, Is that up there? Yeah, it is. Uh, we started with the 2012 Southland Aquaculture Strategy, which was really about looking at where the opportunities for growth were for aquaculture in the future. <coughs> then we moved on to the Southland Regional Development Strategy, uh, and that's where I personally got involved as the Programme Director for the strategy. And it was really a significant undertaking, and we had a shared vision, the region and iwi, for a confident intergenerational population a place where our young people have high value jobs and a reason to stay. There were nine projects as part of that strategy. Two key ones, and I remember Tom Campbell, who uh, was the chair at the time, saying if we could get these two across the line, then that really gives Southland a future. Those two key projects were aquaculture 
and the other one was the rejuvenation of the inner city. And we can proudly say that that latter project has been completed uh, with thanks specifically to Scott O'Donnell and others, um, the ILT. Uh, we've got a proud um, modern city uh, that delivers urban amenity that we desperately needed. So the second one was aquaculture, and that was around economic diversity. We're a very commodity-based economy, and the, aqua uh, the salmon that we farm in New Zealand is actually high-value protein. And there was a real opportunity here for um, a, a scalable industry um, here in Southland. So as part of that project, uh, we developed a working group, which was led by Mark O'Connor, ex-Southport, Rex Chapman, the chairman of Southport, and uh, legal expert, uh, Thomas Hildebrand, um, Naitahu Seafood, Tommy Fogo, ex-Sanford, and Ken Swinney, ex-Environment Southland. And the focus here, and these were all volunteers, were focused on exploring new sites. Um, then we looked at a RAS land-based hatchery uh, for salmon, and that development is about to kick off. And then as technology advanced, we turned our heads to open ocean aquaculture opportunities for Southland all along advocating for a regulatory pathway. The real barrier to growth that was back in 2016 and is still today is a consent for water space. And until that happens, nothing will happen. So then um, at that point in time, that group decided it was time to hand um, the baton over and we created the Mirahuku Aquaculture Group, uh, which was aligned with the just transition process. That wheat reshape group was created with industry, related industry stakeholders, including Sanford, Naitahu Seafood, Southport, Ewe, Aquaculture New Zealand and government agencies. With the view of a consent and train, we needed to look at what were the costs, the factors, the opportunities, the infrastructure requirements to ensure the region is well placed to maximise this opportunity. And again, until we have a consent granted, there will be no commitment to supply chain investment. Now, we, as we complete the um, MAG process, we have recommended that we have an enduring aquaculture group or entity established. The region needs to be organised, aligned and have government support to move quickly and capture and maximise this opportunity should a consent be granted. We need a platform that is well positioned to action priorities. And if we take learnings from countries like Australia and Tasmania specifically, we don't want duplication of resources and infrastructure, which happened there. Uh, we need to work on things that we can collaborate um, and ensure our infrastructure development is efficient, effective and well planned. We need to be knowledge sharing, we need to be a conduit for innovation and best practices. We need to collaborate on education um, with iwi and education providers and industry to create real clear vocational pathways. And looking beyond the farming itself, we need to identify gaps in local capability that could be filled by targeted investment to ensure strong, stable supply chain. We can have an industry here, but we need to sure, ensure that the region maximises the opportunity for our people. This EAG proposal has been endorsed by Iwi, Arua specifically, Naitahu Seafood, Sanford, along with Great South in the Chamber. So we're really excited if we can fund this platform and have a person on the ground, a manager, who is working collaboratively um, to prioritise actions and a new strategy that will be under development, we see a future that's really positive for Southland. <laughs> Continue. Um, so in terms of the global top context, I think we all know that aquaculture is the world's fastest growing primary industry and is considered a sustainable solution in feeding the world. The global demand for premium so seafood is high and salmon in, uh, specifically and in particular the salmon, king salmon, chinook salmon that we farm here is of high value so it is not considered a commodity product. New Zealand are a very small player with only 2% of um, global aquaculture demand, uh, but we are set to grow should we have the right regulatory settings, uh, investment and organisation. 
we can be a big part of the future globally. This all aligns with the government's aquaculture strategy, which states um, they want a $3 billion industry by 2035. And Southland, oh. Southland can be a significant part of that. In terms of us, our goals for um, open ocean aquaculture, Southland could play a significant goal in that $3 billion, $1 billion target, uh, which is a third of that, that goal. We currently produce in New Zealand 15,000 tonnes of salmon, which could grow to 150,000 targets, uh, 150,000 tonnes over time. Again, it's important to state that in everything that we do here, people should be at the heart of our decisions. Um, aquaculture has the potential to provide high-skilled, high-paid jobs right across the supply chain. It also has the opportunity uh, for new business development, so not only jobs, but new businesses. And I think if you look at TY, it's a really good example of that. The value of TY isn't just TY itself, it's the capability that has been built around TY uh, with its high-skilled um, suppliers. So we're moving into an exciting time because the key thing here is advancement in technology and aquaculture means that we can take aquaculture offshore and it can be a real scalable industry um, here in Southland. Uh, and <clears throat> with the blessing of Ngaitahu Seafood, we were able to um, give you an update on Project Hananui. So Ngaitahu Seafood have developed Project Hananui, which is currently in the fast track process, sitting with the EPA. Uh, and a decision for that uh, application is expected in August 2023. So the project proposes to construct and operate open ocean salmon farming within a two. 1,500 hectare area of coastal marine area, and approximately 2.226 kilometres off the northeastern coast of Rakiura. So you can imagine yourself standing on the coast two kilometres out to six kilometres is, is quite a way in the open ocean. Um, so the southern end of the site is approximately 10 kilometres northwest of the settlement of Oban. Um, just to highlight here, Project Hananui has been uh, developed in collaboration with Murihuku Runanga all the way through, um, and they are under strict instruction that if there is significant environmental impact, um, all operation is to close. And they reiterate that all of the time, which is great. Um, so as a Ngaitahu business, we are charged to ensure that all our operations are carried out in a manner that is mindful of the impact we are having on the environment and upholds the principles of kaitiakitanga. In everything we do, we strive to care for, protect and nurture the environment so it can prosper through the generations. So if you would like more information on that project, please go to their website um, or contact Joseph Thomas. Um, we've also had the blessing of the Ocean Beach Collective to uh, provide an update on the Aquaculture Centre of Excellence. Firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge the genuine engagement Bluff Limited have actioned from the very first day they came to Bluff um, and the potential they've seen in Ocean Beach. So Blair, his board and team definitely know how to bring the community on the journey. Um, and their commitment to building capability in our community is outstanding. So a very big mahi to them. So um, as you can see up here, this is an update from Blair. Um, do you need me to read it out? The Power Farm Biomass um, expansion and sales are in progress. Uh, Whiteback Farm Stage 2 expansion and sales are expected pre-Christmas. Uh, CH4 Global Seaweed Farm Expansion and Freeze Dryer is in progress. Uh, ongoing on-land salmon farm discussions, which is quite interesting and exciting. Uh, there have been discussions with Kelp Blue, Macro Sister Seaweed Hatchery in development. So Kelp Blue are a global company with a vision to rewild the oceans with uh, kelp. Uh, there are initiatives in train with SIT. Um, with the progression of NZQA Level 3 and 4 Aquaculture Certificate courses. 
uh, AUT Masters in Aquaculture Partnership with Ocean Beach. That is also in progress. Uh, as mentioned yesterday, there is a distillery in development um, and a distillery cellar door and tours will start in 2024. Uh, and, oh, that's a great update. Site beautification, if you know Ocean Beach and that whole site, it really needs some beautification. So great to see that update. Um, now back to enablers to growing Southern aquaculture. Over the last couple of days, we've heard loud and clear what the enablers are to um, get things going for our region. Uh, so as Sarah mentioned earlier, the Enduring Aquaculture Group and Aquaculture Cluster Manager, this is the key next step to continue the momentum that has been created over um, recent years. Uh, we haven't just thought up that this group and this cluster manager is a good idea. It actually comes from international learnings and insights from um, Norway and Tasmania. Um, and the, the biggest insights from them is collaboration is key and regional leadership. Uh, and also clusters work. Do you want to talk on clusters? Um, if you want to understand clusters, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, a really significant point too is that this, the concept of the structure, it has been endorsed by Iwi, Awarua, Ngaitahu Seafood, Sanford, Bluff Limited um, and other regional stakeholders. So that's um, quite a significant milestone that you've got this collective really um, championing the next stages. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion over the last two days around regulatory and policy frameworks, uh, so to enable South and aquaculture, favourable policy environments play a crucial role. Um, and I've got down there, how do we as a region support the evolution of favourable policy environments? Infrastructure, a very good session yesterday on infrastructure um, and included uh, is energy security, access to water and infrastructure to support business growth, access to suitable land, and um, the ability to build a secure supply chain. So this includes Southport infrastructure, hatcheries, and other related supply chain uh, platforms. Again, how do we, as a region, enable better regional infrastructure to enable new growth industries? And finally, investment. Sarah touched on it earlier. Without a consent, the consent for the Hananui project, we're dead in the water. We're in a holding, we're in a holding pattern. Um, however, should a consent, consent be granted, this will trigger the need for significant capital investment across the supply chain. Um, and as a region, we've made the commitment uh, through to an EAG to work collaboratively to ensure an effective um, and efficient, sustainable, lower emission industry is developed. I've just got at the end there, um, ease of doing business enablers. We touched on the regulatory framework, infrastructure, and there's all of these other parts that need to be triggered should that consent be um, approved. So I think the biggest takeaway that um, we want to leave with you today is the importance of regional leadership We've heard all about that this morning. Um, but if we truly want Southland aquaculture to grow and thrive, we need to do it collectively in a cohesive fashion. Got anything else to say? Okay. Tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you.